Hey there, AVGL fans, and this one's going to be a video covering the top teams of each division and kind of ranking them as to where exactly they seem to fit in. And this one, it's going to be really interesting to go through because some of these teams are looking great, some of these teams are looking strong in their division, but when it comes down to fighting each other, it's going to be a little bit different for them. So just going through the top eight teams real quick so you know their names we're gonna have the university of advancing technology we're going to have university of tennessee orange we're going to have georgia tech yellow we're going to have north carolina state university white we have st joseph's university salisbury university stony brook university and the last one is going to be ohio state university so all eight of these teams right now are sitting at the top of their division they are playing extraordinarily well and the question really comes down to it where do they stand in regards to each other? Overall, they've been having some really strong games. They've been playing very, very well. And I'm going to be covering kind of from the bottom up which team I expect to see be able to kind of come out on top, which team I expect to see be one of those top contenders. But we're going to be starting at the bottom. Which team is just going to not be able to kind of hold up their own against the other divisions? Now, the bottom of this is looking relatively close. Honestly, if I'm just going to be completely real with you, the bottom three teams really could come in any order, maybe even the bottom four, but really I'm looking at these bottom three as kind of being able to fight with each other. They should be able to take wins off of each other, but when it comes down to it, they're all playing relatively well. They all have kind of equal opportunity for eighth, seventh, and sixth when it comes down to it. I think one through five are a little bit easier to define, but these last three are looking relatively close. I'm personally going to have University of Advancing Technology. As they've been playing well, they're doing okay, but when it comes down to some of these other teams, I just don't think they're going to be able to have what it takes, and I think they're going to get knocked down to the bottom. And when it comes down to it, really just sitting right above them, it's going to be CJM and his crew on Georgia Tech Yellow. While I think they're strong, while I think they have some good opportunities, maybe especially against advancing technology, who's going to be an eighth, I just don't see them again being able to take a, a game off the rest of these teams, so they're going to find themselves placed at seventh. And the same thing can really be said. North Carolina State University White, very important distinction there, is that they are playing well, but they haven't been playing well enough that I think they will take some of the games off of the other teams from five and up. And really, when it comes down to it, I think they're stronger of the bottom three. I think they should be able to find themselves at sixth place. But sixth place is just going to be where they end up kind of finding their home. I think they're a little bit better. They're better than the worst, but they're not quite good enough to be in the top four. And again, another team. This one actually could have potential to fight their way up into the top four. The top four gets a lot closer than you would think. But right now, University of Tennessee Orange is my personal number five because I think they're good, but I think they just have a little bit too many mistakes for them to be not picked through by some of the top tier teams that we see in some of the other divisions. I think that they're going to have a good set of fights. In fact, I think above the bottom three, they should be able to easily 2-0. Against some of the top four, maybe numbers two, three, and four, they should be able to find a game at least, but if we're looking at best of three sets or even more, they're going to have a lot more of a rough time, and I think that they can learn, they can adapt, but I just don't think they have what it takes to move themselves forward. And at fourth place, I'm going to be putting Ohio State University, actually. And now when you look at it, they have nothing but wins under their belt. So why would I put them at fourth place overall in the divisions? And the answer is that they have been winning, but I feel like it's all on the back of Sheikah. I feel like this one has been the Sheikah show. I feel like they just haven't had the cohesion as a team to really find their footing against some of these other teams. And I think that having Sheikah or Ghost Ninja and possibly even, you know, Ampane, Precap, Sidewinder, I feel like they have the potential to find themselves over the top other the, the other four teams. In fact, they might even be able to find a game off of the top three teams, but I think that because they're putting so much focus onto having one or two carries for their team, that's ultimately going to be the downfall. I feel like they could be picked apart easily, especially if Sheikah falls behind. I feel like Ghost Ninja might be losing some of that farm in the jungle, and ultimately, while Ohio State's doing excellently in their division, I think they're going to be fourth place overall. Sitting right above them in third place is going to be St. Joseph's University. And now the reason I put St. Joseph's in third instead of having them up higher is really going to be the difference of experience, really. The top two teams right now, I feel like, have a lot of time together. And honestly, St. Joseph's has a lot of time playing together. They have a lot of experience, and I think that that's the reason they've earned this third place spot. They should be able to kind of slice down everybody who's in fifth through eighth, fourth through eighth even, because I think they have the better advantage over Ohio State. But when it comes down to it, I just don't think they have quite what it takes to take down the number two and number one that I have listed here. 
that it still remains to be seen. Of course, they could play very well in this division. We might see some upsets in some of the other divisions. And while they are top right now in theirs, I expect to see them number three overall. They're really strong players, I think, with a lot more work. Not even a lot more work. With a little bit more work, a couple more weeks, they could be vying for first place. But right now, I feel like they are falling a little bit behind, and I think that they're going to be the ones that we see in third. Honestly, the top three teams are probably some of the harder ones to place, so it really does come down to who can find the better advantage of who. Personally, I'm going to put Stony Brook right there at number two. And again, this is the same thing kind of like so, uh, as, as we see with St. Joseph's, where it's, I think, third, maybe not even third, because I think they're really close with St. Joseph's, but fourth through eighth, they should have no problem kind of slicing them down, undefeated in their division right now. They're playing well. And they've got some really big names on their team. In fact, we, they've got some veterans, the same thing as St. Joseph's. But ultimately, I just don't see them having exactly what it takes to be able to take down the team that I have listed as number one because the team that I think is number one right now is a little bit stronger. And while I think Stony Brook has a little bit of an advantage just because of the synergy that we saw out of them this last week over St. Joseph's, I just don't think that they have the synergy and the kind of team calling so far that they would need to be able to take down number one. The question is, what can Mojo Cat and Mort Brooklyn do? I expect to see a lot of practice from the two teams, Stony Brook and St. Joseph's, to kind of come together, but they are very close, and honestly, they're all really close with number one, but I feel like number one is going to be a very clear one right now, is Salisbury University coming out on the top. Collateral, Fatal, Blaziken, Intellects, Dean Cole, Dansland, and Replicant, all of these members, very strong players. Of course, Collateral and Fatal are probably the duo lane that I have seen consistently throughout the last, I want to say, year maybe even longer, Dean Cole, Dan's Land, Blaziken, all of these are players that are very strong in their roles individually, and they've been playing together for a long time. I think Salisbury University ultimately has an advantage team-wise. I think they're going to be a little bit stronger. Again, another team undefeated in their division, and I think that we're going to see them continue that role throughout this. And assuming that we don't see Stony Brook or St. Joseph's kind of skyrocket to the top, practicing hard, and just come in and start crushing everyone they play against. I expect to see Salisbury University ultimately be able to come out on top. They are my number one team right now, but there's still potential for them to fall down, and there's still potential for them to get even better. And really right now, I mean, the top four teams, I want to say, are looking very close, very strong. I expect to see a very, very competitive set of AVGL, especially when we get to that final bracket and fight through it and ultimately I expect to see these teams have some really fun times fighting each other but with that I mean I'm gonna end this video here we're going to see how this evolves over time see where these teams fall into place right now those are my top eight